to Juxtapose. I'm Jeff Blankenberg. Today's episode three, we're going to talk about Popfly.com and creating your first mashup. Uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with what the mashup is, imagine taking uh, a set of exposed APIs, a web service, and uh, taking more than one of those, mashing them together and creating a third application that does something bigger, better, more um, than each of the individual services did before. Um, that's the general idea behind a mashup, and Popfly.com is an engine that allows us to do that. Uh, so let me jump over to popfly.com and just uh, give you a quick tour before we jump into creating our first mashup. So here's popfly. Um, this is the standard interface. You can see that I've already signed in. Uh, but what we're going to do is first talk about what we can create. So we can create a mashup. Uh, we can create a web page, a block, or popfly explorer. Today we're going to talk specifically about mashups, but uh, I will define block for a moment. Uh, you can create additional blocks for your app, for uh, for your existing APIs, for your existing web services that you may have out there, so that people in the public can use them uh, in Popfly. So that's what you can do when you create a block. Uh, but for mashup, we're just going to choose mashup here and jump right in. So the first thing I want to show you is that this entire body area here um, is all Silverlight. So if I right click here, if I right click here, if I right -click, right click here, uh, this is all a silver, fully Silverlight interface. Um, and that really gives us some power in uh, user interface and uh, some dynamic transitions and stuff. For example, if I close this tutorial, you can see that the box kind of shuts down and moves over. And it's, it's, it's a nice little effect. But what we're really focused on today is building our mashup. And so when we take a look at this stuff, let's, uh, let's jump in and talk about some of the things that are in here. So I was talking earlier about blocks. And for example, if we look at calculator, I can drag a calculator on my surface. And we can come in here and look at the, the methods that Calculator allows us to perform. Get random number, get random whole number, get minimum, get max, that kind of stuff. So when we're passing values back and forth between these blocks, sometimes we need to perform actions on them. Uh, and if they're mathematical, we can use Calculator. But you can see that there are lots of different uh, tools for us to use in that, in that uh, realm. So what we're actually going to do today for our, uh, for our simple mashup is we're going to take the information I have about the people uh, that I follow in Twitter and we're actually going to put all of the locations of those folks on, uh, on a map. Uh, so let's go ahead and close down our calculator. We don't need that. Uh, but let's go to social networks and we'll go grab Twitter. So there's a Twitter block pre-created for me. And uh, you'll see that inside it also has some methods. Get latest posts, get friends, get friends posts. Uh, the one I'm most interested in today though is get latest friends posts. What this is going to do is first take my, uh, my user ID so it knows who I am. So let me type that in really quick. Um, and then a number of posts that I want to return. So with this, it's going to return the 10 most recent posts um, that I would see uh, as a Twitter user. And the, the, the way it determines that is by all the people that I follow, it's going to go out and get the last 10 posts of all the people that I follow specifically. We have some other operations here, like get latest posts. This will be across the entire timeline of Twitter, everyone around the world, um, which is interesting but really hard to follow because there's millions and millions of users. So let's keep it with latest friends post. We'll keep it with my username and my uh, 10 is, is, a, is a good number to start with. And uh, let's jump back out of this. You can see we get some nice transitions as we're working with this, which I really think helps with the, 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 the feel and understanding of what you're really trying to do. As I roll over each block, it spins for me. So I get a feel for where I am, where I'm working. Um, and if I just go ahead and preview, this is, uh, this is like hitting F5 at Visual Studio. I'm actually running my application. Uh, and as we see, it's going to load up here, and it's going to go out, and it's going to grab those last 10 feeds. And you can see that uh, this guy thinks his phone sucks, and they're talking about OneNote as a killer app. Um, but these are all just comments that people have been make making. And if we jump over to the Twitter interface, you can see those exact same things here. Let me refresh Twitter. Maybe. Uh, yeah, and you can see, so my phone sucks. All this stuff is the same stuff that I would see in the Twitter interface, but they've gone out and grabbed it for me. And this is all the information we would see uh, in the object. We, you can see they have their location uh, most of the time. Uh, Jason Follis does not. Keith Elders in Hasburg, uh, Mississippi. But we can go down and see all this stuff. So that's well, all well and good, but this isn't really anything more significant than what I'm seeing over here. Uh, what I'm really interested in do is doing something significant. So let's take a look at maps. And we'll take our virtual Earth. And we'll throw that on the page. And you'll see that we'll actually get a map in the background. Um, that means that the virtual Earth block has been loaded. And now we can come in and see what, what's going on inside Virtual Earth. So it's looking for a latitude and longitude, a URL, a title, and a description. And then these are some other commands, but uh, we won't worry ourselves with those. So it's the first five that I'm most interested in. And I need to get my information from the Twitter API into Virtual Earth. Well, I could go ahead and write a bunch of custom code and build an application that does all this, or I could click 
and click, and you'll now see that URL, title, and description are automatically filled in for me. It's going to say, hey, I'm going to pull all that information over from Twitter and use it as the virtual earth information. But you'll also notice that we have this little alarm. And what it's telling me is, is that for latitude and longitude, I need to set a value. And that's because Twitter, as we saw, doesn't know latitude and longitude. It knows what city and state you're in if you've chosen to enter it. So what we're going to have to do is find a way to get that information from Twitter to Virtual Earth through some sort of tool. Um, now, I can go down to the tools and we could do some stuff, but uh, there's actually a GeoNames uh, service here. And what I, can, what I can do with this is take a look inside, and it has a get latitude and longitude method. There's some other things in here as well, but that's the one we're going to use. And it takes an address. So this could be Quest Field, or this could be uh, Cleveland, Ohio, or whatever I wanted it to be. Um, but I don't want it to be hard-coded. I actually want it to be pulling the same information from Twitter. So again, I'm going to click on Twitter. I'm going to click on GeoNames. And now if we look in here, it's going to take that location value from Twitter um, and use it. But that doesn't get it to Virtual Earth. I need to click on GeoNames and click on Virtual Earth. And now if we look in here, you can see that GeoNames is populating the latitude and longitude. And Twitter is populating the rest of the stuff. So if we come in here now and hit Preview, it's going to load my map up. It's going to go out to Twitter, get all the information I need. And it's going to put the images of all the folks that I'm following on Twitter, at least the last 10 posts that I've gotten from Twitter, on a map. So this is Joe O'Brien. He's actually based in Columbus, Ohio. This is Keith Elder. He's down in Mississippi. Chris Woodruff is up here in Michigan, uh, in Grand Rapids. So you can see that uh, it's putting all these people where they want to be. Now, as an example, it's not always right because, again, we're relying on user-entered data. And as you'll see down here, Alan Stevens is, is hanging out uh, in the Gulf of I thought they just said Gulf of Guinea. There we go, the Gulf of Guinea. And the reason for that is, is if we uh, if we were to look at Alan Stevens' data, let's see if we can do that. I don't know if we can look at his profile or not. Um, but he has he actually listed himself as being based in Knox, Vegas, Tennessee, which of course isn't a city. And so it's doing its best estimate, which of course puts him in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean near Africa. So um, it's not entirely accurate. It's all dependent on user data. But for those people that have entered their cities appropriately, you can see that uh, Joe O'Brien uh, is definitely where he should be. And I don't know if we can come in any closer to see anyone else. Because if everybody put Columbus, they might be stacked right on top of each other. Yeah, it would appear that way. But I think there's one beneath him as well. But so that's, that's a very simple example of creating a mashup just using Potfly. Now we can take this stuff and save it, as you can see up here, and if I come into My Stuff and look in Projects, I'm not going to save this one, but I've, I've already created it previously. I have Twitter Earth that I created. I, I can also do some stuff with my Xbox profile. I can also uh, manipulate Facebook. There's tons and tons of blocks, and of course you can create your own as well. Uh, the other nice thing about this stuff is that you can share it. So if I really wanted to take this project and put it someplace, I can embed it, which is just going to give me some information as an iframe. Uh, I also have the ability to put it as a sidebar gadget, add it to my live spaces, put it on Facebook, or email it to friends uh, as an e-card or just a standard email. So there's a lot of different ways that you can take the stuff that you've created and get it out of the Popfly interface and put it on, uh, on your own web properties. So I hope you'll get out and try Popfly soon. Uh, I think it's a really powerful tool, and uh, I think it really demonstrates the power of what Silverlight is capable of doing today. Um, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you in Episode 4 very soon.